So our time is the most valuable thing to consider when we are working on an important project, whether it's color grading, editing or compositing because 90% of the time we have a deadline to meet, so we need to hurry up. And I believe we need to learn everything that will help us speed up our workflow, no matter what software we are using. So that's why today I will give you some useful tips, eight great tips about the color page in DaVinci Resolve. I think you should learn these tips so that you can finish your work quickly and spend more time with your family and your loved ones. Let's move on to DaVinci. Okay, let's start simple. Tip number one is just saving a grading as a preset. I've got this clip of my good friend Sedat. He's a great DOP and he has done a lot of great work. I'll leave his Instagram page. If you are interested, you can check his page. Okay, so let's say you have finished your grade and you want to apply it to your other videos. Just go into your viewer, right click, and select grab still then click on the gallery on the upper left corner and you will see your still here after that you can select another clip and right click on the still and select apply grade you have now applied all the grading work you have done to your new video you'll have the exact note tree and you will be able to go in and make changes if you want now let's say you really like this grade and you want to save it for the future projects. There is this little icon that says still albums. Click on that. You will see your still albums on this menu. Click on power grade. Same as before. Grab a still and save it there. Now every time you open a new project, this grade will always be here. Our second tip is chromatic adaptation. This effect allows you to adjust the colors in a scene to compensate for differences in lighting temperature and it ensures that the final result looks more natural. Let's say this is your temperature node. Normally, you would go in temperature and tint settings to adjust your white balance. I'll increase it a little bit and let's grab a still to compare it. I will reset this node, then I will go into the effects library and drop chromatic adaptation to this node. You will see these settings on this menu. Change the illuminant types to color temperature. Source illuminant is the white balance settings on your camera. Target illuminant is the desired white balance. If you know, you can also put your color space information here. Minus Eskimut 3 Cine and Slot 3. So now you can control your white balance much more effectively. This is the primary white balance and this is chromatic adaptation. I don't know if you can see the difference, but you can use this as an alternative to the primary white balance settings. So tip number three is outside node. Let's add another node. I will create a window around my subject, then I will invert it. I want to add a just basic vignette. I'll decrease the offset. Okay, let's see the effect clearly. This is before, this is after. We have a basic vignette effect around the edges. But let's say you want to make changes inside this mask as well. So right click on this node, go into the add node menu and select the outside node. Now you will see that this node is also connected with the alpha channel. So if we go in and make adjustments in this node, you will see that it only affects the middle part of this mask. I am just exaggerating it so that you can understand what it is doing. In conclusion, this can be a useful tool from time to time. Tip number four is a shortcut and that is Shift F. I will use this footage as an example. Sometimes when you drop an effect on a node, you see that it has so many menus. For example, I've got this Dehancer plugin and there are so many adjustments that I can do here. In order to see what I'm doing a little bit better, I can press Shift F and I will be able to work with the effect much better. So I won't lose any detail. Press Shift F one more time and it will bring us back where we were. Okay, tip number five. Tip number five is versions. It's a great one, I use it a lot. So let's say you want to compare two different gradings. You can just come up to the gallery and apply a different look and compare them using a wipe tool. But there's a better way to do this. Go into the color menu on this toolbar. Under great versions, you will see that you have four options. Previous, next, add, and default. So I want to add a great version. 
the shortcut is Ctrl Y, Command Y on the Mac. So I will press Ctrl Y and we will see a text on the corner that says a color grading version is added. I'll move on and change this grade. Let's change the film profile and I will adjust the tint. Now I will add this too. Let's press Ctrl Y again. That's also added. Now we can use previous or next shortcuts to see the added grades. It shows three versions right now because it also shows the default look. Let's add another one. I will increase the contrast with curves in this one. I'll press Ctrl Y again. Version number four is added. To make the changes more obvious, I will add a fifth one. Let's use previous and next shortcuts to quickly switch between these versions. Okay. This tool is really great and it saves a lot of time. There is actually a way you can use it even more easily. You can see these options have shortcuts. They are a bit hard to remember so we can change them. Click on DaVinci Resolve on the upper left corner and click on Keyboard Customization. Here you can change each shortcut as you like. Under all commands, click on Color. You have all the color page settings on this panel. Let's search for versions. Click here. Now you can change it to any keystroke on your keyboard. I will change add and default to 3 and 4 and the others to 1 and 2. I will click on save. Now I will just press 3 to add a version and use 1 and 2 to switch between these looks. Keyboard customization is a topic in itself so definitely check it out. Tip number 6 is using HSV color space for our saturation. Let's take a look at this shot as an example. First, I will reset the saturation node. So there are several ways to saturate our image. You can use the basic primaries saturation option, or you can go into HDR wheels and increase the global saturation. If you simply want to increase the saturation of your image, these will be enough. But if you want to get more saturated and vibrant colors, I recommend using HSV. So I will go into my saturation node, right click and go into color space, then select HSV. Then right click again, go into channels and disable channel 1 and channel 3. Now you will be able to control your saturation levels with your gamma and gain sliders. With this method you will be able to achieve a much better color vibrance without affecting the overall exposure of your footage. Okay, let's move on. Tip number seven is the difference between primary and HDR contrast settings. So again, let's look at how to get contrast in different ways. First, we have primary contrast. I'll increase it. I'll also get a version to compare this time. Let's reset this node. Secondly, we can create a S curve to increase contrast. And let's take a look at the HDR version of this. First, I will change my color space info quickly. Now I will increase the contrast value. So to see the difference, I will go all the way up. As you can see, if I push it all the way up, it doesn't affect the colors of our image. This is all the way down. As we can see, there's still colors. But if you do the same thing with the primary contrast, you will see that it also affects the colors. Okay, so let's increase it a little bit on the HDR panel and adjust it with the pivot right next to this. Let's add this version as well. And now we can compare. This is the primaries version. This is the second one with the S curve. And this is the final look with the HDR contrast tool. So as you can see, after the adjustments we make with the HDR contrast value, all the colors look kind of faded. That's why you also need to increase the saturation levels if you use this method. Now, if we compare it to the other grades, we get a better understanding of how it's actually affecting the footage. Tip number eight. So our last tip is about the scopes. Suppose we want to see a specific color or if the skin tones are correct, I will click on these three dots here. Then I will enable the display qualifier focus. Click on this drop down menu and select qualifier. Now you will be able to see where that color is on the scopes when you hover over your footage. This is a very useful tool, especially when you need to check the skin tones if they are in the right zone. You can also enable the skin tone indicator. Click on Parade and select Vector Scope. Click on the Settings icon and enable Show Skin Tone Indicator. You will see this line appears on the Vector Scope. This means your skin tones should be somewhere on this line 
So as you can see in this example, it is in the right zone. Okay, all right. That's it for today's video. I hope these tips will be useful to you. Don't forget to write in the comments if you have any questions. I tried to be as clear as possible because I received comments about this. It would be great if you liked or subscribed to my channel if you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Until the next video, take care.